All right, everyone, we are back with another testing video for the new M1 Max 16 inch MacBook Pro, 64 gigabytes of memory, fully spec'd out. And we're gonna put it up against this desktop here that I spent a lot of money on earlier this year to get the best parts I could. It's got an RTX 3090, a AMD Ryzen 9 5950X, 16 core chip, 128 gigabytes of RAM, and it's just intended to be the edit anything time-saving machine and if that MacBook comes even close to it I'm gonna be questioning everything do I need this whole setup you know with the PC down there sucking power or could I just use this MacBook for pretty much everything all right let's find out first I'm gonna pull up the projects on the MacBook just because I expect that to be pretty fast um, but I want to leave the surprise of the PC and how fast that is for after so let's go over to the MacBook all right so we have three cameras here in this project on the MacBook Pro 16 M1 Max, it, uh, the cameras I used are the Ursa Pro Mini G2 with this 4.6K Blackmagic RAW. We have 4K ProRes from the Blackmagic 6K Pro. And then we have more B-roll with the Canon C70 at 4K and maybe some 2K footage. All of it is color graded. This is a finished project that I've exported and it's been done for a little while now. So we're gonna see how well it scrubs on the MacBook. This is DaVinci Resolve on the M1 Max. And I actually, for this test, unlike yesterday, I turned uh, smart rendering off. So there's no render cache at all and we're in full resolution timeline mode. So this is no, there's, there's no help from pre-rendering here. I mean, scrubbing, I can go through everything with no issue, which I kind of expected. I think the real surprise will be the render times versus these two computers. And then let's just try playback. No issue, this is 4.6K, or is a footage here? Canon footage, it's all smooth. Um, just Okay, no surprises there. All right, let's export this. We'll see how long it takes. And then I'll pull up a Premiere Pro project real quick while I'm on the Mac. All right, so I actually have my prior export, which I did. I don't know which computer I did this on. We'll ignore those results because it might be this big computer here. So we'll just clear that out. And we will render this to the desktop. Uh, we'll call this just test render restaurant all right we'll go to the desktop as far as my render settings go it's mp4 h.264 1920 by 1080p uh, 23.96 frames a second all the clips by the way are either 60 frames or 24 frames quality will do automatic encoding profile automatic auto this is how i would use it every day so i'm not going to kind of mess with this this is how i export daily all right so add to queue and hit render this will give me a timer here so we don't need to bust out the stopwatch. I mean, it's, it's cruising, so pretty fast. Th 36 seconds. Whatever was here before was over a minute. I don't know, what, that might have been the Windows laptop. But either way, the DaVinci Resolve rendered this 36 seconds for a min or 3 minute and 26 second clip rendered out in 1080p. Uh, the, that consisted of ProRes, Blackmagic RAW, Canon C70 footage. So that, that's unbelievable. I mean, it, it edits smooth, scrubs smooth, and exports super fast. All right, let's see how Premiere Pro does. We're gonna pull up a project in Premiere Pro. So here we have a project in Premiere Pro that is currently something I'm working on. Um, it consists of Ursa Mini Pro G2, 4.6K Blackmagic RAW, and 6K ProRes as well as Canon C70 footage, both 2K and 4K. Lastly, we also have drone footage, 5.4K, 10-bit from the Air 2S. So I wanna see how it scrubs with and without film grain. I wanna try a warp stabilizer real quick on just one quick clip and kinda of see how it, how it scrubs and how it, how it plays back, so, and how it exports, of course. So let's go ahead, and this is the clip I think I need to stabilize. It's kinda of shaky, it's hand handheld um, so let's just go ahead and, and apply warp stabilizer and I'm going to do it's cruising right along well okay 
and it is done. So that was like five, 10 seconds maybe tops. And let's go ahead and change the motion to no motion. So it's kind of like a tripod shot. Flawless, that, that was way quicker than I expected. One thing I like about Resolve is that the stabilization, uh, first of all, you don't have to drag an effect. You just kind of click it over here and it stabilizes super accurately and quick. Um, but that's impressive. In Premiere Pro, it's also acting pretty quick with the stabilizer. So let's go ahead, and by the way, we have film grain on. Let's scrub. No dropped frames. We're going through an interview. Just interview footage here, graded. Some ungraded footage in here too, but that's because this is not a finished project. I mean, it's going between everything pretty smoothly. It took like a second to catch up when I went between the interview footage to some B-roll, but, but here we go again. It's, it's, it's perfect. I mean, nothing that would slow me down. I mean, scrubbing, I would give it a 9 out of 10. It's pretty much perfect. It's, it's what I would want in a project I'm working with. Let's just try playing through these clips that change from B-roll to interview footage real quick. We have both contemporary and traditional styles. We manufacture our own jewelry on premises. We've got a full shop with uh, two goldsmiths in our basement. And uh, we have an. Playback is good. Film grain is on. So I don't think I really even need to test film grain off. But let's just turn off that layer with the film grain. And it's. I mean, I guess it's a few percent better. But okay, we're good. Let's export this. So this is a two minute and 49 second video. We're going to export. Oh, let me turn the film grain back on. Film grain on, export, match source high bit rate, H.264, MP4 file to my desktop, and maximum render quality, maximum render depth turned on. We'll get my stopwatch going. So two minutes, 49 seconds, and we're going to export it. Typical settings that I would use, 1080p, so it's downscaled, it's high bit rate, uh, file size estimated 218 megabytes. Here we go. Jesus, it says 30 seconds estimated. All right, so that's done. That took 53 seconds to export this two minute and 49 second long video. That's pretty good. Um, in Premiere Pro on the Windows M1 Max, 53 seconds to export a two minute and 49 second video. All right, so now we have our benchmarks on the M1 Max on um, Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve. So let's go ahead and pull it up on this Windows desktop with the 3090 and the AMD. This is what I'm excited about. Do I even need this setup? I mean, I, I think so. I don't think that the MacBook could outperform this, but let's pull it up and find out. Okay, so we have the project pulled up on the Windows desktop in Resolve. So let's kind of see how that scrubs and how that exports versus the M1 that we just did. So same project, by the way, her, you know, you see these red clips here. It's her, um, you know, speaking part. For some reason, I couldn't link those. I don't know if I lost the files or whatever. This is a, a kind of a older project. So everything else is the same though. This was the same way on the MacBook. She, we just can't hear her speaking. I don't think that really adds to any render time anyway. So just scrubbing through. I mean, it's pretty, pretty flawless. My gut reaction is to say it's a hair less smooth than the MacBook, but I don't want to kind of jump to that conclusion because it's pretty good. I would call it a draw. So it scrubs how I would need it to scrub to work without being slowed down. Playback, we got some drone. I mean, it did skip a little bit from the drone to the... Okay, well, once it goes once, let's just make sure that we have render cache off. We do, and we're in proxy mode off. So full res, same exact specs that we had on the MacBook. It just, it's stuttering a little bit when it switches from clips, which is kind of shocking to see. 
Same thing on both, we have 17.4 uh, studio on both the PC and the Windows, or sorry, on both the PC and the Mac. I mean, but it is stuttering a little bit when you go from like one clip to the next when they're both like high resolution. Sometimes, but sometimes it's not. So maybe it's the drone footage because DJI footage is notoriously hard on everything. I mean, it's stuttering a little. I'm gonna give this to the to the MacBook. I'm gonna say it's a little better. I mean, neither of them would stop me from working at you know the highest pace possible, but it's definitely smoother playback on the MacBook. Okay, but I mean, I would give this a nine out of ten, and the MacBook like a nine point five out of ten. So it's I mean, a little sluggish, but both very good. All right, so let's export this. Same thing to the desktop. Restaurant test. Same thing, MP4, H.264, 24 frames, 1920 by 1080, automatic quality. And we can see the results from the windows in the same project file here, 36 seconds. So that this has to beat 36 seconds or else I will be questioning why I spent all the money on this desktop. And this is, again, this is in, in Resolve, which um, maybe Premiere will be the better test of that. But here we go. Same thing, render. Here we have it, Resolve, DaVinci Resolve on an RTX 3090 machine, 16 core Ryzen, twice as long to export the same exact files on Windows than on the M1 Max MacBook Pro. I, I don't believe it. One minute exactly, I, I mean, you can see that here, I, real time, one minute exactly to export the same file the same video, same settings, same everything that the M1 Max MacBook Pro did in 36 seconds. So DaVinci Resolve, you could spend even more money on, on a Windows PC, especially now with the prices, and get better performance on the MacBook still. So you can't beat this MacBook in DaVinci Resolve, I don't think. I mean, maybe there's a, a system that's a little better, but realistically, this is what consumers are gonna get, you know, at least, a mix of these parts all right so here we have the same project that I just had up on the M1 MacBook Pro on on Premiere Pro this time on a Windows ultimate build desktop PC um, so we'll just we'll let it load for a second I know it's a little slow to just pull up and we'll make sure there's no peak files generating or anything all right, so we're fully loaded up here in Premiere Pro on the Windows machine. And I don't expect there to be any issue with playback. It might even be a little better than the Resolve. Again, we've got the drone. We've got Blackmagic RAW. We've got ProRes. B-roll from the Pocket 4K in Blackmagic RAW. Scrubbing performance. Just as expected, very smooth. The same sort of like micro glitches when you go from clip to clip sometimes, but not really. I'm gonna call it a tie on timeline scrubbing on the Windows machine and the MacBook, which is shocking in itself compared, you know, when you compare the, what the specs are of these, but it's a draw on playback in the timeline. So let's do that quick, let's do that quick warp stabilization on the, the clip here, we'll see how fast it was. Remember, it was um, about five, maybe 10 seconds in Premiere Pro. So we're gonna take it off of here. It should still be on. Yep, so we're just gonna delete the warp stabilizer. We're gonna go to our effects, get the warp stabilizer, and we're gonna drag it on, and we're gonna see how fast it goes here. It's just as fast. I mean, if you really wanna compare the times, it's going and, and it is now done. So if you really want to, you know, go by timestamps to see how long that took, I'm not going to do that. I think it's just as fast, maybe a hair faster on the Windows machine. I don't know, but we're going to go ahead and just change it to no motion again. Play it back. It's good. So, all right. So I think so far, all in all, we're on, on pace with the MacBook Pro with the Windows PC desktop. And this is with film grain off. So I just realized film grain is off. Let's turn film grain on. Same exact effect. It's a little heavy, I think it's 10%. 
still playing back, but any edge that it had versus the MacBook when MacBook when the MacBook had film grain on is gone. I'm gonna call it a tie. Let's play back. Okay, so neck and neck with the MacBook, virtually no difference. Let's go ahead and export this. So again, two minute, 49 second long video being exported on the Windows PC with the RTX 3090 and 16 core AMD Ryzen 9. Same thing, H.264, match source, high bit rate. Gonna go to the desktop, maximum depth, maximum quality. 1080p, 24 frames a second. We are at two minutes and 49 seconds of a clip. So this is kind of the uh, money shot, if you will. We'll see how long this takes. It's gonna lose. <laughs> My hand's getting tired. More, more than twice as fast. The Windows PC exported this in two minutes and five seconds. The MacBook exported it in 53 seconds. So now that this machine that I just spent unheard of amounts of money on the 3090 and kind of built it up over a few weeks or probably even a few months is, is outdated by a MacBook Pro that's like one-tenth the size and power consumption 53 seconds for the premier macbook pro export two minutes and five seconds for the premier pro windows export again just to sum it up davinci resolve which isn't too shocking better on the macbook premier pro better on the macbook than a windows pc with a 3090 an rtx 3090 an amd ryzen 9 5950x 16 core chip 128 gigabytes of RAM. Um, I don't even want to count up the dollars I spent on this thing, but it is now outdated by a, a laptop that costs less and can be basically portable as heck. I mean, all right, that's it. That's the result. I mean, we're starting to see these videos come out with Premiere Pro performing, outperforming Final Cut Pro. Even if you check out Scott McKenna's video, he did a good one where he compared uh, Final Cut Pro to Premiere Pro on an M1 and it was faster in Premiere Pro. Premiere Pro is faster on a MacBook M1 Max than a beastly Windows PC that I spent tons of money on. What, what world are we living in now where Premiere Pro is one of the fastest machines? I don't know what magic they work with Apple to kind of get this optimized, if you will, but there you have it. I guess I'm gonna be doing most of my work on the MacBook Pro. I'll still use this. I mean, I spent way too much money to sell it. I'll, I'll probably lose money. I'll use it for for gaming or if I just, cause it has like a sound card and um, it's just, I don't have to worry about it being plugged in. So I'll still use it, I guess, from time to time. But if I don't want to sit here on this desk or if I just want to sit somewhere else, the MacBook's gonna give me a better experience. Okay, there you have it. All right, so if you want me to test it, I mean, at this point, I don't think I really need to do much more testing. I'm sure I could load up a timeline with more effects. Um, but honestly, as far as my workflow goes, I've tested what I think I need to test and the MacBook's better. I'll be using the MacBook over the next few months, uh, every day, day to day stuff. So if anything changes, I'll kind of post a, a video about it. And if I can think of any other tests to do, I will do that, but leave me a message in the comments. If there's anything else that you want to see exactly, happy to make a video, give me a subscribe, and then uh, that way you'll be informed if I post anything about the MacBook. But that, that I mean, that's that. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.